Supercoach crew, our captaincy was what separated us from an amazing week this week when you had Nico Hines come out in that last game and pick up 180 and you see everyone absolutely fly past you, getting 1250, 1300, 1400 for some guys in those top rankings there. When I captained Harry Grant, yay. So that didn't work out too great, but it is what it is. It's going to happen week to week. Grant was great for us last week. And this week, we're going to be hoping for a different man to get that amazing score, which I'll show you in a sec. But 1,119. Leaves is only losing 1,000 ranks. So we're still 8, 8, 7, 8. You know, with a lot of those guys, as I said, just absolutely leapfrogging us in this one. We're about 550 points behind first, which isn't crazy at all. And, you know, as, as you guys know, one or two really good weeks with captaincy choices. The rest of my players are really doing well. So I'm not too stressed about them. Really not focused on making too many trades this week. I've boosted the last two weeks. So this week, probably just the one trade, which I'll show you in a second. My main focus over the last bunch of weeks has obviously been around points, getting the right cash cows in, getting the right mid-range guys that are going to go up a lot in cash. So you see my team value sitting there just under 13 million there, which I think is amazing. And I'm looking at the guys in the top 20, and there are a bunch of them I have a better team value than. And most of them I'm at least even with, which is great. So it's exactly what you're looking for at this part of the season is to have a similar team value to a lot of those top guys. And then it's really going to be based on how the scoring goes week to week for you to be able to do really well and catch up to them. Because you know, there are a few there with 13.3 million, 13.1, 13.2. And you know, those kind of numbers is, is great, but we're not too far away. And with a little bit of cash in the bank, that always helps as well. So that's the score at the moment. 39 trades coming into this week. I've currently used one, but we'll go through all of the buys, the holds, and the sells over you know, what happened last week. And I did win my head to head league, which, yeah, by about 200 points, which is good. Pretty comfortable there. Eels and Panthers, that first game, obviously very much a back and forth affair. You had Jermaine Hopgood. He's averaging an incredible amount of points this year. So if you don't have him still, then as I say, delete up. But Madison come back with a vengeance there, 74, so big tackle numbers, ran the ball well also, and he stays on that edge. So expect Maddo to continue being a gun this year. You knew he was going to come out and try and dominate in this one, given he had the last three weeks off, and they lost, so that's that. Penasini was good. He's still going to be one of those good CTW options, especially when their draw opens up. As of next week, it makes it a little bit easier for them. Cardi Party, I still think you can hold him and play him week to week. Uh, they have, you know, still a, a tough-ish assignment this week against the uh, Rabbitohs in that first one. So, sorry, against the Roosters in that first one, which is going to be a fun one. But I still think you can play Cartwright, depending how well your team is set up and how many good guys you have in the reserves. But that's that there. Moses had a bit of a lower one. Dylan Brown, who I brought in, didn't score as well either. That's okay. Uh, it is what it is. Of course, you bring him in, he has his lowest one. But I traded Dewey out, who had a lower one than that. So, no stress on that side. In the other game there, you have the other side there, you have Hosking with 117. Up to you if you want to bring him in this week. I think there's a little bit of a risk depending on what happens with Liam Martin, what happens with Ghana. I'm personally bringing him in in fantasy in Supercoach. I'm going to hold off just because his price won't change, and I've got you know, a lot of players doing really well. Doubt he's going to get the 100 every week with a try, but still expect him to do well. And if he keeps that spot next week, then will be a great option. Isaiah Yo continues to do his thing. Edwards has been great. A good return game from Cleary. Hoping for a bigger one this week. I think I'm going to vice captain him and captain Turbo, which I think is going to be the play. Turbo against the Knights is going to be a fun one. Hopefully he can come out with a try or two. And a couple of tries. This would be great. And top off 57. He was solid. Taruva had so many runs in this one. So 50 points for him. Isaac Tungo not playing uh, as well in terms of getting all the attacking stats. Panthers will get better. A lot of these outside backs. I expect some big points from them this week. Stephen Crichton a low one as well. So I'm glad I did trade Tungo out for Jacob Karaz. That's for sure. Let's move to the Storm and the Tigs there. And scores in this one were pretty solid. Eli Katoa, someone I keep continue to miss out on. Uh, in this one, decided to go for Tom Gilbert, who I could play in the front row forward, which is a position I was lacking instead of Katoa. And that didn't work out as well this week. So hopefully we can have a bounce back from Gilbert and Katoa. You'd imagine he keeps doing his thing. This week, they have a, tough, a tougher assignment there against the uh, the Buns. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he plays and if he can continue to get line breaks and try assists because he's going really well. Warbrick was sitting in my emergencies this week, but yeah, great cash cow at the moment. Nick Meany's been one of the best scorers in that CT dub. 
position there. Jonah Pezzett, if you're picking him up, it's as a, a bit of a cash grab this week because Husey will be back, so be aware of that. But it's very hard in that halfback position, especially if you're trying to get up to a Hines either this week or next week in round seven. So, yeah, very interesting. Oh, sorry, or, or in two weeks in round seven. Welty got 55. Wasn't my greatest game of scorers here. I missed out on Katoa. I had Welty in there and had Harry Grant as captain, so that was tough. Harry will be fine. There's really no good hooking options at the moment, so that's that. Bateman looks like he'll play, guys, so if you're looking at him, probably next week I think would be a good time to pick him up. He didn't score great in that first one, and the 95 here shows what he can do, and he will be one of those guns in the 2RF position, and yeah, look, look at him there, I'd say. Kapoa, he's been going pretty well. If you picked him up, you're happy with that. Dewey got the 54. Actually, yeah, he ended up getting uh, rounded up. He was about in the 30s, I think, pre-update. So, yeah, unfortunately, dropped seven points there from going uh, him to Brown, which sucks, but, yeah, it is what it is on that one. And then guys like Utu Kamano, I think over the next few weeks could be a sell. It doesn't have to be this week. You can still play him and hope for a better score, but, yeah, it wasn't to be in that one for him. Dolphins Broncos, so very low scoring affair for the Dolphins, apart from Jared Wallace there. The Hammer continues to do well. Lemuelo, if you picked him up, he's at 370, and I still think he's a good trade-in at the moment. I probably wouldn't be bringing in the Hammer now, but he's been great as a hold at the moment. Yeah, Gilbert there, he's the lowest score of the year. He'll hopefully he can get back to that mid-60, 70 consistently. And on the Broncos side, Reese Walsh came in, did his thing, got a big, big price rise. So I was very happy with that. They have a nice run over the next few weeks as well. So any of these Broncos, you know, Adam Reynolds, Walshy there, Stags, all of those guys you can hold. And then Payne House has been super consistent. So they're all the guys there. Carrigan, you do need to worry about a little bit. He's pretty expensive and not scoring super well. Like he had a good game, I believe, you know, the first couple of rounds. So since then, a little bit lower in terms of his scoring. He could be one of those guys you eventually move on to a higher scoring 2RF in the next few weeks. So that's a, a definitely a play there. Farnworth didn't get the attacking stats, but he's still going to be one of those top guns. And yeah, Reynolds had a bit of a low one, but he will be fine going forward there. Cowboys and the Titans. We do see Highland Lukey comes back. So I think over the next few weeks, you just have a bit of a watch on him. If you're looking at other potential options, Nanai, I think you can sell him now. Thankfully, got that 70 for you. But overall, not one of those guys you want to hold in your team long-term unless he continues to get those meters gained up, which happened last week. But will that happen long-term? I'm not sure. Holmesy there, 69. So you got a decent score out of him. He's still holding him for sure. And yeah, as the Cowboys improve, hopefully, he uh, will continue to get opportunities to score really well and kick goals. If you brought in Chester the last couple of weeks, you do get that last week now to get his cash grab. And if you are playing him, I hope he goes well again. Uh, other than that, not too many guys in this Cowboys team. Robson's going to have up and down games. Very much a you know, defensive specialist there. Run the ball a little bit. The odd attacking stats, but you know, guys like Harry Grant going to get more try assists and, and tries more likely than what Robson is. As I said, the hooking is a bit of a shit show at the moment, that's for sure. Khan Pereira, 117 and Fafita, 96. So I played Fafita, did not play Khan Pereira, but that's okay. Uh, we'll take his massive jump in cash. They have their buy this week. So what you do with a few guys like Tino, he still came out and was able to do well in this one. He's been very up and down, but yeah, I think you just need to hold him at the moment. He's had two really big scores, so he'll be fine there. Longer term, same with Fafita, hold on to him. Guys like Jaden Campbell will be interesting going forward. You know, potentially able to get some attacking stats at a fairly cheap price, but again, in that wing, uh, that fullback spot, makes it pretty tough to, to slide him in there with all the other good options. And, you know, you've got Teddy, Walsh, Tavojevic, these types of guys that I think will do better. Tanner Boyd, do you hold on to him with that cover that he provides? Up to you. I think you can sell him for sure. He's uh, made a little bit of cash, nothing much, but yeah, definitely not a good option. Not like a good option to bring in over the next few weeks anyway. Brimson with the 12, not good. He is injured. Get him out of your side at the moment. Okay, Bunnies and the Eagles there. They had some, a, a grouping of, of decent scores. Guys like Kolomitangi, Cook, and Tass all did well at the 70s and the 60s there. All of those guys are going to be solid going forward. Tass, you'd imagine, as their draw opens up a little bit, can continue to get some attacking stats and do a good one. Murray, we're definitely worried about. I think you can sell him if you'd like. Use that cash to get to other players that are a little bit cheaper scoring similarly and potentially you know save up some cash for Hines or Cleary or these types of players that you'd be looking to pick up in that half position or potentially you know, if you don't have Harry Grant, like looking to get him, something like that would be ideal. 
Cheeky Amy makes some money on him. He'll be a guy to move on soon. Campbell Graham, not his best score, along with Latrell Mitchell, but both holds heading into this week. On the other side, Olakwatu and Garrick still did great, 71 apiece. You had Trebojevic with 58 in this one. I will be captaining him this week. Vice-captaining Cleary, as I said, and hoping for a big one from him. I'd imagine DCE will have a good one as well. You're making a little bit of cash on Kepi at the moment, and Kola is a trade-out with his injury, unfortunately. Warriors and the Dogs there. Scores were pretty high across the board in this one. You had Vaalea, who had a cracker. I wouldn't be looking at him. It's a bit of a flash-in-the-pan type of score. Sean Johnson's been awesome, so if you had him in your squad at the to start the season, he's in the team of the year so far in terms of points. So him... Uh, and uh, I can't remember who's, who's he got the best halfback score. And then the uh, 5-8 score is Dillbags Brown at the moment. So awesome work from him. Jackson Ford. He's one of those guys I think you can slot in this week. He's not going to make a tremendous amount of cash because he's averaging 45 with that low one. But if he can continue to get that random line break, get some more attacking stats, he could be that guy that could make you a sort of 100 or so thousand. Not a must-have, but definitely a solid one at that cheaper price if you need someone there. You got Nickel Cookstad is there, and he got 48, so he's okay at that awkward price. Tamati Martin is out this week. You can hold or sell. Same with Torquil Harris. Is he going to be an amazing top scorer long term? Probably not, so you could move him on with a bit of a knee complaint, knee issue at the moment, so that's that. And Wade Egan returns, but be aware, I own him personally. Coming up against a tougher team, I'm not exactly sure how he's going to go. Will he be able to get the attacking stats that he seems to be getting week in, week out? I'm not sure, and I'm not sure if I will actually play him this week. Very excited by Karaz and the Dogs up against the Cowboys. I'd imagine they're a good chance of winning that game. So Karaz is an awesome option for you know, captaincy if you don't have any of the top guns, like the Chaboyeviches and, and Clearies. I'd probably have Karaz just over Harry Grant, just with the base stats that he has, and then if he is able to get a try, or a try assist or anything like that in there, he's a good one. Maxi, Maxi King's been really good as well. So big minutes for him last week, 68 minutes there, 72 points. Definitely a, a solid option with TPJ not being around the side. But are those minutes inflated with, you know, Far Money Brown going down early last week? He did come on and play the rest of the game to get those big, big minutes there. Perham's been good, guys. Keep holding on to him. Avrilo, a decent score from him. Marnie, not great at the moment. So 55, just hold on again because there's not really many good options there. Preston and Alamotti, I played both of them last week for 42 and 41. Wasn't great. Should be able to do better. I'm probably going to play Taruva over Alamotti is where the team's set up at the moment. And that is all. Let's go through the last two games and then have a look at my team there. Big, big scores in the Knights, guys. So don't expect this every week from these outside backs. You know, 122, 109, 103, and 85 from Mazu, Gagai, Miller. And Frizzell there, all great scores. Miller looks like he's going to be getting more involved in you know, the offensive side, obviously with his tries, but his passing was much better as well. And if they can continue down that right side, I think that's going to be good. But I doubt it's going to happen like that every week. You know, they came out and, and dominated the Raiders. Can that happen again uh, against better sides? I've got Manly this week. I doubt it, especially Manly at home as well. So that's that there. Lockie Fitzgibbon continues to be very consistent which is great Braley I wouldn't be looking at just because he's such a tackler rather than anything else at the moment Hudson Young starting to get back to some good form after the first few weeks of being poor Matty Tomoko at that sort of awkward price is scoring pretty well also Joe Tarpane 67 surely it's time for him to have a breakout game been waiting for it for a while it is time that's for sure and I hope you didn't pick up Tommy Starling Dragons v Sharks in our last game of round four we had some big scores, obviously, on the Sharks side of the ball. Hines, Ramian, Nikora, and Malatalu there, 96 and above. So, Nico, if you pick him up this week, you've got to slap the captaincy option on him and uh, hope he goes really well for you. But also for myself, not so good, <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, Dragon side of the ball, you give a few of these guys a second chance. Guys like Jack Bird, uh, who just didn't wasn't able to have a great game. He's moving between the middle and the edge as well, so that's a bit of a worry. Murdoch Kosilla. Surely you can sneak some attacking stats soon. If you want to move him on, completely fair. But as you see in my team in a sec, I got rid of David Mowale for Schuster. And I've held on to Murdoch Masilla with the dual position as well. And he's still getting that start. I think he's going to be you know, a chance of being okay. Let's say that. Uh, and then you had Teague Wilden, 62. He will have a game where he gets 80 or 90 soon, guys, when he gets uh, some attacking stats. So that's that one. And then we move to my squad, how it's set up, ready for this next round. I'm not sure how I'm going to play my reserves. 
but the captaincy R-band comes off Harry Grant. You can see all the scoring here. I had Welch as a starter. Not sure if I'm going to play Welchy or Preston in this one. You know, guys like Cartwright as well could be an option. Let me know the way you'd set up the reserves this week. We've got Katoa potentially making a little bit of cash going forward. Sammy Walker returns, which is great. for Fafita comes out. So that's the that's the changes this week. Uh, Trebojevic is going to sit as captain. I'm going to play Taruva over Alamotti with you know, Panthers, I think, potentially having a bit of a breakout game against the Raiders, although the Raiders need a good bounce back. So pretty happy with my center wings at the moment. Looking for an improved game from Dylan Brown in this one. Better than that 47 that he picked up. He started pretty well, got that try assist as well, and then just didn't improve from there. Cleary, we're hoping for a banger. So him and Trebojevic are our two guys this week. Potentially a try from Wilton would be great down that left-hand side. And a bigger score from Tarpany and also Harry Grant. So let me know how you'd set up my bench there. Obviously, I've got options include Egan, Welch, Cartwright, Preston, Schuster, and yeah, the other guys I'd be playing. So let me know how you go with that one. I'm very excited for guys like Karaz as well to come out and score well. Good luck this week with your super coach team. We're all hoping for a big 12, 1300 and improving in these ranks. Getting the top 5k would be pretty cool. But yeah, only using the one trade this week, I think is going to be the play. After using one in the first round, three, three, and then one, I think that leaves us in good stead going forward. You're know, averaging a two per week, especially with the amount of trades we've got. And there's still a bunch of these guys in this team that are making money. Cartwright over the next few weeks will be a bit of a sell. You know, Preston, if he can get up into the 500s, he's probably a sell. Also, guys like Welch aren't scoring super well, so we can move on from him. And I think I need to make a little bit of cash to probably go Sammy Walker in two weeks up to Nico Hines would be the play to go there before he it makes way too much money and he's out of reach. So at the moment, if Walker doesn't, if he averages where he's at now, where he's priced at, he'll, I think it's about 300K to get up to Hines. So something I need to look at over the next few weeks. We might need to find, hopefully, a cash cow that will come in and be able to do a job or look for someone who's going to do a job over the buy period and we can slot them into maybe our 2RF or, uh, or, or the front row forward or the center wing. So we have a bit of space for them to sit there and not do too much, potentially, if they're going to be one of those guys over the orange, origin period. Uh, that's the general thoughts. So as I said, good luck this week and I hope you do great.